Okay, so welcome back to another session of the Relaxing Fertility Yoga sponsored by the Fertility Partnership. So my name is Julie Ela Grace, and my invitation to you always is to just practice kindness and compassion to yourself and to your body. Um, when we're talking about fertility journeys, they can be incredibly emotional, they can be incredibly stressful, and I just really want to invite you to take this hour to, to nourish yourself. And sometimes I think it depends on the person, right? Um, some people uh, love woo-woo things, and some people only like hardcore Western science. Um, and to be honest, relaxation fits into both. Um, you know, we know that when we start to relax, we reduce our cortisol levels. And reducing our cortisol levels has um, knock-on effects throughout the rest of the body. Um, not just for hormones, but um, and not just for fertility, but for our general wellness as well. So I just really want to invite you to, to see this hour as an hour to, to nourish yourself in every way, your body, your spirit, and just acknowledge where you are in this moment in your journey. Um, just to say, um, of course, uh, because we're recording this session, it's a live session, but we're recording it. And so if you're watching on YouTube, just as a reminder, everyone is welcome to these sessions. So not just women, but uh, men, partners, anyone, um, involved is, is always welcome to come to the session, though you might hear me occasionally reference the female anatomy a bit more than the male anatomy. I don't really reference the male anatomy in these classes, um, but, um, but still, um, yeah, again, men and partners, um, all welcome. Okay, um, today I'll play some relaxing music. This is more on the woo-woo, but actually there's science here too. It's, um, we're starting to in Western medicine, even, we're starting to understand that there is something about sound healing that can be accessed, um, and these tracks uh, were made specifically with certain frequencies that we know um, have different healing qualities. So, yeah, so I'll put those on. Um, and the last thing to say is that, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, the, the last thing to say is that I do have two dogs and Oh God, sorry. Um, I do have two dogs and two cats and they occasionally do come in and they do occasionally make noise and it is supper time uh, right now. So there are people in the kitchen making some food. Um, so if you do hear or see them, try to just let it be vibration. Just other creatures living their lives. Okay, so the, the first thing to do is we're going to, I'm going to put the music on. And then we're going to find either a comfortable seated position or a comfortable position lying down. It just really depends on you. If you've just finished a long day sitting in an office, go ahead and lie down. If you are, um, or, or even if you still want to sit, that's fine but just whatever feels right to you. And if you want to sit, you can sit up onto something, a bolster, a block, or anything else, a cushion. Okay. So if you're sitting, try to sit up nice and tall. And if you are lying down, you can lie down flat or you can lie down with your knees bent. Just find what feels good to you. And then let's take a few rolls of the shoulders. So we're going to inhale, roll the shoulders up and exhale them down and back. And again. And one more. And then just relax the shoulders down. Relax the hands, either facing up or down. Close your eyes. And take a few deep inhales through the nose with exhales, sighing or blowing the air out of the mouth. And 
Just do this as many times as you need. Inhaling calm, exhaling, sighing out, letting go of any stress or any tension. Just let your natural breath take over again. And just notice your breath. Notice what the breath can tell you in this moment about your body, about your energy, about how you're feeling right now. start to deepen the breath. So we're going to inhale through the nose and take the breath down into the belly so that the belly rises with the inhale. And if you hear the little dog paws on the, the floor, again, try to just let it be vibration. Come to the breath again, inhale, take the breath down into the belly so that the belly rises with the inhale. Exhale out the nose and feel the belly fall. Deepen the breath further, inhale through the nose, fill up, belly, ribs, chest, expanding all the way up through the inhale, exhale out the nose, chest, ribs, and belly contract. So this three-part breath is known as a dirga breath. It's a foundational breath in yogic breathing or in pranayam. So try to stay with this breath if you're newer to pranayam or to yogic breathing. Otherwise, you might try coming into your ujjayi or your ocean wave sounding breath by constricting in the back of the throat and the epiglottis. So it's like you're inhaling and exhaling the word home through the nodes to create an audible wave sound. And as you're breathing here, I'd like you to imagine that with each inhale, you are bringing light and calm into your body and with each exhale you're releasing any stress or tension that you no longer need so just really visualize inhale imagine all of this beautiful healing light coming into your body circulating through your cells and with each exhale, imagine that you're just starting to let go of and release any current heaviness, tension, strain, whether that's physical, energetic, emotional, mental. Just again, really inhale, bring light into your body. Exhale, release the tension, release the strain. So we'll take about five more breaths like this.
start to mentally ready yourself for movement. And just in your own time and in your own way, start to draw some movement back into your body. So just let yourself stretch, roll around, yawn, sigh, just whatever you need, whatever would feel good to you. From here, let's gradually come up to seated. So if you're lying down, just start to bring yourself up to a seated position where you can cross your legs. seated just to say one more thing here um, again anytime you're up at seated if you feel like you're being drawn back so if you have tightness in the hip flexors or in the lower back please feel free to sit up onto something onto a bolster onto a cushion onto just whatever you have even a pillow whatever you have available okay and then let's take an inhale roll the shoulders up exhale them down and back and again the shoulders down and then let's take it in now lift the arms oh and exhale take your left hand bring it down reach your right arm across so it's oh it's just we're opening laterally here and inhale lift up through center and exhale over to the other side and we're just going to take this side to side. Take a couple more. One more. And then inhale, take it all the way back up through center. Then we're going to turn the palms, take a big stretch up to the sky. Exhale, unwind your fingers, hinge forward from your hips, bow down towards the earth in front of you. Roll the hands back in towards the heart, inhale, lift, and exhale, bow. And just take a few like this. up onto your knees inhale take the heart forward roll the shoulders back exhale chin into the chest and round back and again one more and inhale take the heart forward and we're going to spin it around so it's like you're scooping out a jar. Take it all the way back up 
to center. Okay, now from here, I want to do one more thing in seated, which is going to feel a little bit awkward. So we're going to come into a vasal vagal exercise, so an exercise for your vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is a, if you've done these classes before, you've probably heard me talk about this. Um, your vagus nerve, it's a cranial nerve that has this wandering network that comes all the way down into your gut. And the vagus nerve can become habituated to stress in the same way as other parts of our body can become habituated to stress. So for example, if you're somebody that tends to get tummy aches or get headaches or you have your shoulders way up here or your neck is really tight, we all have different ways that we, we can store and manifest stress physiologically. And the vagus nerve is one of those internal parts, of, part of the nervous system um, that can also, again, internalize and habituate stress. So one thing that can be quite nice to do, especially when we're talking about uh, situations that can be stressful, is creating a circuit breaker for the vagus nerve, um, just, just to give the nervous system a little bit of a break. So we're going to come into, you again, a vagus nerve exercise. Um, I'm going to do a different one than the one I typically do. Um, this one I even feels weirder than that one, I think, but um, just go with it. Um, this is, again, it's for your vagus nerve, but it's also for your neck and your shoulders. Um, so what we're going to do is, again, we're going to stay seated. So we just sit up nice and tall. And I don't know, it was, I can't decide what the weather is today. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Can't decide if I'm if I'm cold or not. Um, okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we are going to take the what is this left hand and we're going to bring it up to the right ear. All right, getting weird, right? And then <laughs> we're going to take the right hand around and bring it to the left side of the rib cage very gently I want you to pull across and tip your head so you're just kind of going shoop, but it's gentle okay nothing nothing uh, ever masochistic here okay then we can take a very slight turn down of the head so already you might be feeling a stretch into your neck but then this is where it gets weird I should stop saying that but I think for some people it feels weird so if it feels weird for you, it's okay. Just go with it. Go with the weird feeling. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look up as far as we can out of the right corners of the eye. Now you have the eyes. So what you can do here is you can blink. You can um, let yourself yawn, sigh, swallow, anything that, that naturally comes to you. But keep your eyes glued up as far as you can to the right corner. So you're kind of looking up towards the ceiling. And we're just going to hold that for about a minute. And you might already start to feel the need to sigh or to yawn or to swallow. And those are all signs, uh, vasovagal signs, signs of that activity. So that's good. But if it doesn't happen, don't worry. It just might mean that your nervous system is less stressed than others. <laughs> Take a couple more breaths here. Take your arms up and exhale, bow down. Roll the hands into the heart, inhale, lift and exhale, bow. And one more. Okay, and then we're going to roll all the way back up to seated. And now we're going to do the other side. So, <laughs> left arm, no, right arm, I'm sorry. Right arm comes up over to the left ear. 
left hand comes over to the right side of the rib cage. And again, we pull and tip. Okay, so tip the head, pull the ribs, and take a very slight downturn of the chin, just slight. And then you're going to turn and look up out of the left corners of your eyes. Oh, we just hold this now. Breathe. Do whatever comes to you. Interlace your fingers up above your head and then just take some gentle circles around through your upper back and your shoulders. towards the sides of your head. So we're just stretching into the back of the neck here. Take an inhale, and then exhale. Turn to peek under your left armpit, so you get this side stretch through the neck. Inhale back to center, and exhale over to the other side. Center. Exhale left. Inhale center. And exhale right. Inhale center. Lift the head, lift the heart, lift the arms. Take your arms all the way down in front of you and then roll over your legs so that you are coming up into your tabletop position. Okay, and then we're not actually going to stay in tabletop, we're just getting ourselves there. Then we're going to roll the bottom back towards the heels. Take the arms out in front of you, take the forehead down, and just take a few deep breaths here in child's pose. fingertips out in front of you so you're going to spread your fingers nice and wide and you're going to roll up towards your hands curl your toes under behind you send your hips back roll your shoulders back so we're coming into our downward facing dog and we're just going to take our pooch for a little walk so we're just going to bend one knee and then the other walking it out And 
and just push back into your full expression of that downward facing dog. So we're going to roll the shoulders back, squeeze under the armpits. Take a few deep breaths here. Downward dog is believed to be a great pose for helping with hormone balance. At the very least, lots of good things going on here. Nice big stretch through the legs. Oh, nice long spine. And then if you want a little more, inhale, lift your right leg up to the sky. And then exhale, bend your right leg, point your right toes over to the left side. So you're turning and opening up through that hip. Inhale, right leg goes back up. Exhale, right toes come down. And then we're going to take the left leg, bring it up. Exhale, bend the left knee, point the left toes over to the right. Inhale, lift the left leg back up. Exhale, take your uh, left set of toes, bring them back down, roll your shoulders back, take a big stretch here. And then exhale, bend your knees and start to walk yourself back. Take the fingertips to the shins, come into a flat back with straight legs. So you walk yourself back to standing, and again we come into a flat back, fingertips to the shins, roll the shoulders back, inhale. Exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, fingertips to the shins, flat back, straight legs. Exhale, bend the knees, curl down. One more, inhale, fingertips to the shins, flat back, straight legs. Oh, and then exhale, bend your knees and round down. Tuck the chin into the chest and slowly rack all your body all the way up to standing. Okay. Once you come up to standing, bring your feet to a hip distance stance and again, roll the shoulders up. Exhale them down and back. And then from here, we're going to interlace the fingers behind the back. So I want you to draw the shoulder blades together behind your back. So you're squeezing the spine with your shoulders. We're getting a nice open chest there. Take an inhale and then exhale. Put a little bend in your knees again. Hinge forward from the hips. Hang the head. Let those interlaced fingers hang back and away from your lower back. Now either stay here. Let this be enough or you can start to circle the arms. So it's like you're stirring the air behind you with your knuckles. It's just an isolation into the shoulders. So knees and hips not invited. And then we're going to go the other way. And take it all the way back to center. Draw your hands back down to your lower back. Unwind the fingers and reverse the swan dive up to the sky. Exhale. Release your arms down. Inhale, roll the shoulders up. And exhale them down and back. Now, the the idea for the session today is that we are working with um, with relaxing the body, again, with this idea of reducing cortisol. So we did the vagus nerve exercise and these poses that we've been doing, these are also um, gentler ways of opening up the body, which we want to keep things gentle usually when we're talking about fertility yoga anyway, and especially IVF yoga. Um, so what I would like to do with you now um, is something a little different. It's it's yoga related, um, but it's it's not a yoga pose per se. So there's something known as TRE or trauma release exercises, and it's basically a way of inducing shaking in your body. So give me a moment just to explain this because it is pretty cool and it's pretty interesting. Um, so there's a theory 
that when we when we have really stressful moments um, and of course we live in a chronic stress state of uh, so many of us so often um, we end up with a lot of stress hormones just kind of circulating through the body which of course when we're talking about fertility we know that we don't really want that um, I mean, we don't really want it anyway right um, so the the theory with trauma release exercises with TRE is that the, the, the example that they use the most is that if you if 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 you were watching a gazelle getting chased by a cheetah, right? So gazelle's getting chased by a cheetah, one of two things is going to happen. Either the cheetah is going to catch the gazelle and the gazelle is going to get eaten. Um, and what usually happens if the animal gets caught is that the gazelle will kind of go into a shock state and they, they freeze, right? And that's all of these uh, hormones, all this adrenaline circulating through the body and it actually it makes it less painful for, for the animal that dies. The other thing that can happen is that the gazelle gets away. And if the gazelle gets away, they usually go to the side of the herd um, and then they shake and 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 they shake. And the theory is that this is actually a release of those, those stress hormones, that adrenaline and everything else. Um, now, we actually see it in humans. So think about when people get in car accidents. A lot of the time people, they start to shake after a car accident. And unfortunately, especially in Western society, it seems, and not just Western, but I think a lot in the Western society, it seems like we don't want people to do that. We're like, no, no, you're fine, don't worry. No, don't shake. Um, no, you're okay, baby. You know, like that kind of stuff. But in fact, physiologically, shaking can be really good for us and in some yoga traditions there's there's a big uh kind of shaking community um and we do use shaking in yoga um, and the trauma release exercises are just taking that one step further so i want to get you to try one of these today and um just to say trauma release exercises it doesn't mean that you're going to start crying or that um you're going to get really upset although if you do start crying or if something does come up and you get upset, consider it only a good thing as far as just letting out um, any any kind of pent up things that might be keeping you physiologically stressed out, okay? Um, I did teach this just in, even in my normal class, uh, my normal yoga class on Sunday morning and uh, some of my clients really loved it and said they walked away from that class feeling really light. We did vagus nerve exercises and these exercises so I hope that, that you guys like them too. Um, so what I need for you to do is to find a little wall space and I'm going to take off my socks here because um, you also need to be able to really ground your feet. So if you're also wearing slippery or fluffy socks, you might want to take those off. So I'm going to move my plant. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to find some wall space. Okay. And we're going to lean into the wall. And in a moment, we're going to take a chair sit. Okay, but between one to 10, I want you to try to maintain the, the, the power through the legs at about a five, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to come and sit. We bring the feet to hip distance. We ground through the feet. We relax the shoulders, relax the body into the wall. When it starts to become a six, or actually when it becomes a seven, go ahead and lift yourself up until you get back to that five status and then take it back down, hold it, and then again, when it gets to be more like a seven as far as uh, difficulty, take it up, and then bring it back down when you're ready, okay? So, I just need to use the timer on my phone here. Uh, one sec, okay, timer, there we go. Okay, so come into your chair sit against the wall. Now, you are going to start to feel this. This is this is intense, okay? Um, this being said, guys, if you are currently in a two-week wait, <laughs> uh, 
caveat here. If you're in a, if you're currently in a two week wait, maybe just give this, this one a little bit of a miss. You can just come up here and you might not start to shake, but I don't want you to stress yourself out too much if you're in the two week wait, okay? If you're in a two week wait, save this one uh, for another time, <laughs> okay? It just occurred to me, okay? So um, so we're in this and we're going to, to feel the, the body start to, to, to gain a little bit of strength here. Now you can force yourself to not shake, but at some point your body's going to want to start to shake and I want you to let it. So you just let things start to shake. Let, you know, usually we try to stop the muscles from shaking, let the muscles shake in this instance and start to breathe as they shake. And this is also the kind of practice that the more you do it, the quicker your body will go, oh yeah, that shaking thing, and it will start to come into it. Oh, and again, let the rest of your body join in. If it gets to be too much, Again, come up for a few moments and you can keep letting the body shake. You can even, it's not that you're forcing it, but you can encourage the shaking. Even when you're at that seven, you can let the body just kind of start to shake things out. And again, then once it's a little easier, you take it back down to the five or to the, to the, the starting position and you just keep going. And again, try to allow yourself to shake. I had a client on Sunday who just couldn't allow herself to let go. It's really common. Um, I'm one of these people that it took me years to allow myself to get a massage because I could never relax um, if someone was trying, funny enough, because I love giving massages, but to receive them took me a long time because it's something about letting go, isn't it? So it's the same, even when you're working with your own body, to really let yourself let go. And again, the more you practice this, the more the body, again, will just kind of go, ah, yeah, shaking, that thing. Because it does something beneficial and your body loves to heal itself. Your body loves to heal itself. So remember that. Remember that you have this anciently intelligent body. Way more intelligent than actually just our single lifetime, right? Our bodies are full of lifetimes before us that know things. Keep it going, we're gonna go, we're gonna keep going. minutes again if it gets to be too much you take it you take it up you take it up you take it up so you can do it anywhere from three to five minutes typically okay a little longer a little longer a little longer keep it going I'll check the timer yeah okay just a little longer let yourself sigh guys that you can do every day or even just every other day is great it's only something that I've started doing in the last kind of six weeks I, I have a really interesting book about it and I found it super useful just a little longer almost there almost there almost there Whew, there we go okay wait so now you're going to come up. Oops, stop, stop. There we go. Okay, so now when you come up, straight away, stand up, but then keep your knees soft, hinge forward from your hips. 
Let your legs keep shaking. So you're hanging out here in Uttanasana, in a standing fold. Just let your legs keep shaking. Slight bend of the knees. Not trying to stretch, but just allowing for those reverberations through the body. Usually this part is about one to two minutes. And start to let yourself move more towards stillness and Uttanasana. Bend the knees. Ragdoll the body all the way up to standing. <sighs> Once you come up to standing, take a moment just to sigh out. <sighs> and if you need to shake anything out or just let everything or let anything kind of loosen out, just let yourself. And just know that even a shaking that you're doing without even kind of forcing it, just allowing yourself to dance, to shake out energy like this, just using your hands, anything else, all of this is beneficial, right? All of this is shifting the energy around your body. And we can talk about it in so many terms. We can talk about it as far as stress hormones. We can talk about it as far as chi or as far as prana. I mean, we have so many different words for kind of the same ideas just across different frameworks, okay? So now we're going to start to take it down to the ground. So to take it down, let's do something playful. So what I'd like you to do here, I'm just gonna show you from the, the uh, bottom half down. So what we're going to do here is do something playful. See if you can cross your uh, feet <laughs> try to just bring yourself down onto your bottom and if that didn't work don't worry <laughs> just come down instead okay and then once you come down we're going to take the legs out front so we're going to outstretch the legs and then we're going to start to make some fists and just pummel the legs a little bit pummel up and around the kidneys, the tummy, up into the chest, and really importantly work your way down the arms and especially around the armpits. So your lymphatic system, its natural pump really is movement, but massages also and things like this are nice pumps for the lymphatic system. And you, get, you have a lot of lymph nodes right here around your armpit. And then rather than punch yourself in the face, take your fingertips and bring them to your throat and your face. And up along your crown. from here we're going to start to come down onto the back a little bit if at all you're feeling chilly just put your your layers back on anything that you've got your socks or your jumpers or anything like that i can't believe i'm saying that on the last day of june uh, oh no <laughs> um as an aside i recently learned this is this is alternative 
uh, medicine, but there is um, there's a lot of good evidence about this particular alternative medicine. As an aside, if you haven't ever heard of castor oil packs, um, I highly recommend um, that you do a little online research if you're interested in different ways of supporting your body through, through say, the IVF process. Because of course with IVF, um, you do have quite a few um, drugs running through the system and some people can find that quite hard on the body and there is um, castor oil packs are a way of helping to to detox the liver um, so I highly recommend uh, just doing a little research there if you're interested in that kind of stuff if you're not interested in it just forget it <laughs> okay um, and it's always important to kind of make your own mind up about these things okay um, it's just one suggestion something that I've personally found um, really therapeutic recently because it's also super relaxing and it's not just for people of course going through um, IVF treatments it's for for kind of everyone because the liver um, can always use a little love from us and uh, anything relaxing is nice too <laughs> um, okay so we are going to we are going to come down now onto the ground. So just go ahead and oh, bring yourself down onto your back. And then once you come down onto your back, bend your knees, hug the legs in towards your chest. Oh, take a moment to sigh out. Take the soles of the feet down, draw your arms out wide into, actually change your mind, yeah go ahead, draw your arms out wide, take your palms, face them up, and then slowly roll into the right side of your body, let your left hand come onto your right palm. And then from here, just slide that left hand a little further, just so you're opening up your shoulders a little bit more there. <sighs> and then inhale, and we're going to roll through center and right on over to the other side. So right hand coming onto the left, and then we slide it out. through center. Walk your feet wider than hip distance now and just relax your arms however you comfortably can. And then we're going to drop both legs over to the right side so you're just pushing off the inside edge of your left foot. What's nice here is that we're getting a quadricep stretch, a hip flexor stretch, and a very slight stretch of the lower back. So one of the things that we avoid in fertility yoga are deep twists, particularly if you are um, in the two week wait, um, that's a sp the two week wait is really the moment that we want to avoid the deep twist. But um, this is just a nice way of giving your body some opening in a slightly twisted position without compressing. Uh, excuse me, I can't speak without compressing the places that we don't want to compress. And then roll back through center and over to the other side. Again, so we're pushing off the inside edge of the foot. Okay, and then start to roll back through the center. One more time, draw the knees in towards your chest, hug your legs. Oh, let yourself sigh out. If it feels good to you, maybe rock and roll around a little bit. And then rock back to center. 
and then place the soles of the feet down either with your knees bent this is easier on your lower back so if you've got some sensitivities in your lower back just stay here like this otherwise extend your legs all the way out just letting them flop and splay and then we're just going to relax the shoulders Close the eyes and sigh out a few times. And start to feel your eyelids become heavy over your eyes. And feel your body also becoming heavy. Everything melting down, connecting to the ground. As you melt down here, take a moment to remind yourself that you are a being deeply connected to this vast planet and a vast universe. Just feel what it means to be part of an ecosystem. Just through the simple act of breathing, being connected to this earth, to other creatures on it. Just remind yourself of this connective power. The fact that you breathe in oxygen and that connects you even to the ocean because half of the Earth's oxygen comes from phytoplankton in the ocean. And that you breathe out carbon dioxide, that you're feeding plants. And that of course your power is even greater than this because you have this incredible power to, to connect with others, to smile at somebody and have that mean something for them, to offer your light, your knowledge, your wisdom from your own life experiences that you always have so much to give even if it doesn't always feel like it so just remember that you are this connected being and that you can give and you can also reach out to receive, that you can welcome in the love of others, you can ask for the support of others, 
You can walk outside barefoot and connect to the earth. That connection is available to you. And start to deepen your breath. some movement back into your fingers and into your toes. And gently roll to one side. Bring yourself all the way back up to seated. And once you come back to seated, take your hands into prayer in front of the heart. Just gently bow, honoring your body, your light, your practice in this earth. And thank you all so much for coming. As always, please just take good care of yourself. Be kind to yourself, give yourself love and self-care in whatever ways resonate for you. So it might be going for a walk, it might be hanging out with a loved one or just watching a really good film, but just please remember to keep taking care of yourself and that's all for now. <laughs> We'll be back uh, next next Thursday um, at the same time live on Zoom. And of course, this will go up on YouTube. <laughs>